Hello, sir. Good evening, Prime Minister, sir. How are you? Very well. Uh, 58 days uh, on the motorcycle. I'm still still alive, so I must be good. <laughs> well, um, I would like very much to salute you for the spirit of resistance and for what you are doing to say soil of earth. I this is not the first time that I see you. I have seen <laughs> some of your videos and I have realized that I am talking to an exceptional man who is a medical doctor in a way and a sociologist and environmentalist but on top of all a philosopher. So I congratulate you on what makes you really and I appreciate the wisdom that is enclaving your mind this is something that is very important to us and also it is not really strange for an indian man to become a philosopher that is where philosophy <laughs> was born anyhow it was not born in greece it was born maybe earlier than the greek philosophers but anyhow so i wish you all the best and my full support and i take your initiative seriously and okay. i should tell you I should tell you one important thing. I was having like five, six years ago, I was talking to an Indian uh, a group of activists, and one word I kept using is that referring to Palestinians under occupation, that we are attached to our land, and I kept saying that we are the sons of the soil. Yes. and uh, these settlers who come from brooklyn and who come from other places there is no way you can bring a plant in, from siberia and plant it in palestine it does not work we are the sons of the soil and therefore we are the organic product of our soil and of our land so it is good that you are reminding the whole <coughs> the whole world of what does it mean to really preserve uh, the soil as source of food for people because you are 100% right it is not uh, the ukraine crisis that is going uh, and the chain supply that is going to affect food supply it is also that the earth is will not be able to produce enough organic products enough food for seven more than 7 billion people so land is shrinking and people are growing soil is shrinking and people are growing in our case it is so sad to tell you that the aggressive settler colonialism has caused incredible damage to our environment it is sad to tell you that 2.5 million trees have been uprooted by the israeli settlers since 1967 when palestine became under occupation so that this is really something that's worth mentioning to you and maybe i should also i'm 100% in full support with what you call for change the narrative i think it is very important that we don't only change narrative but it is also important that we change mindset the way we perceive things we should not think, take things for granted a lot of people take things for granted you know food should be there you know drinking water is always available it is not we will face serious challenges on drinking water on availability of soil organic products we should human beings should not live on hormones or fruits or vegetables injected by hormones you know you put a cucumber in the fridge and it keeps growing because it is full of hormones under humid conditions and so on and also my dear friend maybe you know when when i was told that i will talk to you i thought okay this this man as a philosopher also the issue for us is not only about soil and earth and so on i should also bring to your attention very important issue which is you know the dead sea is we we have 38 kilometers of shores of the dead sea as palestine the rest 
On the east side is Jordan and the other parts is the, uh, the Israeli occupation side. You know, the Dead Sea will have no water at all. It will fully and totally dry up by 2044, according to estimates of experts. So we are really facing serious damages. Dead Sea, it means minerals, it means history, it means the lowest water point on earth, and so on and so forth. So this is also something that needs extra attention in your uh, exercise and in your effort to really bring attention to what is happening in the world. Also, maybe I should, last thing I should tell you, that we are fully engaged here in Palestine in land reclamation to avoid political desertification. What do I mean that, by that? Political desertification is the Israeli construction of Jewish settlements on the land, on fertile soil, on, on our mountains, on, on everywhere. And that is really damaging our environment and creating serious problems that uh, land in Palestine is shrinking and the settlers are taking our source of livelihood. You know, and that's my last point to you, you know, Muslims in general, they believe in one thing, that God created a human being out of salsal. And salsal is actually something similar to clay. And clay is made of soil. So that, you know, if there is Maybe if there will be no soil or enough soil, maybe human creatures will shrink also. But this is something that uh, I will leave to your fertile mind to uh, elaborate on that. I salute you and I respect your initiative and my full support of what is needed from the Palestinian side to support you. I'm ready to do that. So, all the best. Thank you very much, sir. And uh, it's a pleasure and a privilege to be talking to you. When uh, we were passing through uh, Palestine, uh, we had about five to six hours. Uh, we thought we will engage with you or somebody in your government. But unfortunately, we got stuck in the security for almost six, seven hours. So, it got late and uh, because of that, we had to leave. Anyway, what I would like to say, sir, I know the political situations, whatever that is, geopolitical aspects, is not in my power to change that. But I would like to tell people of Palestine that whatever the political situation today may not be the same thing tomorrow. But the most important thing is we must keep our lands alive for future generations. Keeping it alive essentially means keeping the soil rich and alive because Politics will change, uh, nation, national boundaries will change, but the soil has to be alive because that is a fundamental responsibility we hold for our children and future generations beyond them. So in this context, it is very important, the Palestinian soil, which has been feeding these people for thousands of years, and uh, just a few decades ago, nearly 90% of your economy itself was agriculture. Unfortunately, it has shrunk now for whatever reasons. But the important thing is, no matter which nation we belong to, no matter what kind of strife or troubles we are going through, this is something we have to do as human beings, that we keep our soil alive. Because soil is not our property. It's come to us from previous generations. We must pass it on as a living soil for future generations. You were talking about water, sir. I would like to tell you that uh, right now, by somewhere between 2032 to 2035, it is expected 3.5 billion people will be water stressed. And this will lead to massive migrations. Over 1 billion people in the world could migrate because of uh, water stress. 3.5 billion people without the needed water is a calamity that you cannot imagine. But that is just 10 years away from us. So turning the soil around is a fundamental responsibility. As uh, you know, it's not in my, this thing to, uh, you know, give you any political advice because you are in the thick of that. And I know Palestinian people have fought for so long for their rights. I hope uh, that gets resolved. But whichever way, whatever our other conditions are, we must keep our soil alive because that is where future life will come from. 
Well, I mean, for sure, for sure. This is something, I mean, you, that you took the initiative. I'm sure that you will receive support from everybody who do, who uh, people who do really care about, I mean, the way you're handling it is not an environmental issue. The way you're handling it is also a source of living, a source of income and survival. I mean, you're talking about a survival of humanity. And therefore, this is something that uh, of should be of an international orchestrated effort. And I think the attention you are drawing by covering 70,000 uh, kilometers of travel here and there to bring attention of people, I think we... We, we 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 appreciate that we support that but maybe we need more than you know a foundation like yours and i think you need an orchestrated effort the united nation should adopt this sort of thing and you know people are going to stockholm in june early june which is an extension of the climate change. Uh, so there has to be, you know, I think you will be able to come to Stockholm to speak about your initiative. COP15 happened in uh, Ivory Coast. I was there for two days and uh, we definitely got the attention of all the 197 nations. One yeah. thing I would like to, you know, this is something I'm trying to bring it to everybody's awareness and consciousness is See, as human beings are uh, based on our nationalities, race, religion, caste, creed, in so many ways we have tried to separate ourselves. But even if we people do not understand what is this all-inclusive consciousness or whatever, at least we must understand we all come from the same soil, we eat of the same soil, when we die we go back to the same soil. So I feel soil is a common factor for all of us, no matter what has happened till now, no matter how confrontational somebody is and conflicts have happened because of that. But it's important that we don't forget we come from the same soil and we go back to the same soil. So using this as a common factor, as a common denominator, I feel there is some possibility of solving situations in our lives because as generations pass, if you continue the same conflicts, unfortunately, the future generations will suffer. So this safe soil movement, one thing is it's an ecological moment, but also it would be wonderful if people use it as a unifying factor among people. Disputes will always be there, disagreements will be there, but how we conduct these disputes and disagreements is very important. If we see a common thread among ourselves, probably we will handle it a little differently. Hopefully we'll handle it differently. And uh, it is my wish and my blessing that Palestine should see peace and prosperity. I, there are many people from Palestine who are with us in our centers, both in India and United States. And uh, it's very unfortunate that they have to be spread out all over the world uh, without being in their own, own homelands. Hope uh, this will come to some kind of solution. But above all, till that happens, we must make sure our soil is rich and alive because that could be the most valuable thing in the next few decades. Very good. I think, I mean, in, in the video that I have seen, you called for, you know, soil without organics become sand and sand with organics become soil. And I think that is really a very important statement on your side because this opens the whole research on earth, environment, science, technology, to be directed towards deserts. If I can that, tell you this, uh, in the last 27 years, we have converted a few hundred thousand farmers into what is called as tree-based agriculture and yeah. revived soils in southern India. Based on this, we are working in a particular river basin, which is 83,000 square kilometers of land, and 5.2 million farmers live and work here. This is a yeah. massive project that we are doing. So looking at the success of that only, the five United Nations agencies are partnering with us today. Looking at the success of this, the government of India made a detailed project report uh, in total as we are doing the project for 13 river basins. And uh, now just this year, about a month, month and a half ago, government of India allocated $2.3 billion towards these 13 river basins. These 13 river basins put together 
will account for 67% of India's land. So if these 13 river basins are revived in the next 8 to 12 years time, as we have done in one river basin, then in many ways India's soil will be above crest. And I will definitely talk to UNCCD, who, who are our close partners, to see how uh, these kind of projects can be initiated in Palestine. You can, you can also appeal to them. Uh, Ibrahim Tiaw is a very committed person. Right now, they are in a convention in uh, Ivory Coast. I was there for two days and just came here. So, uh, we can definitely take this ahead. And after this is over, we are setting up a panel of 25 scientists who will handhold small nations to fulfill this. We have committed to CARICOM nations in Caribbean region to do this also. Definitely, we can engage uh, Palestine in this area, particularly through the UN agencies. I feel in Palestine, considering the political situations, it's best that, best that UN agencies involved rather than a private foundation. Very good. I mean, we have really <clears throat> all UN agencies are functioning and working in Palestine, UNDP, UNFPA, United Nations, uh, UNRWA. I mean, nearly every UN agency is actually here. And uh, I take the idea that uh, you propose that Palestine will be part of this. I welcome that. And we are ready to engage uh, with this initiative. Whatever needed to engage us, I will be more than happy to do that. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for your generosity and uh, giving your time for this. I hope to visit you in the near future sometime and spend some time in Palestine with all of you. Thank you very Inshallah. much. I wish you all the best and Thank keep you. the good work going. I salute you, your energy and your dedication. All the best. Thank you, sir. Namaskar. Bye-bye.